is a show that focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello, everyone. This is Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. Today with me, I have someone that you probably recognize the voice to, or the other voice to, or the other voice to, or the other <laughs> voice to. Ms. Jenny Nicholson, hello. Hello. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, a little early still, I admit this. A little early. Okay. I guess this feels dishonest because we've already been speaking before you recorded, but <laughs> yeah, good. Shh. No, this is <laughs> off the cuff. Okay. We planned this. <laughs> No, no. Yeah, yeah, tell me more. Is it early there? That's so It is early here. <laughs> wow. The spherical world has different time zones, and I'm in one of them. Okay. And yeah. I must be in a different one. I think that's, that's how crazy. it works. That's crazy. Yes. I'm glad we talked about this for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody is totally in the dark, could you uh, describe a little bit uh, what do you do? Okay, um, I make, along with Griffin Lewis, the other guy, um, we both write Friendship is Witchcraft, and that's the fan parody series where we dub over episodes of My Little Pony with our own comedic script, and I do a lot of the voices on that, too. Yep. Well, I think a lot is a bit of an understatement. You do <laughs> almost all. Yeah, I mean, there are ones I don't, but yeah, oh, the yeah. main six, um, Spike, Apple Bloom, Luna, um, Snowdrop recently, <laughs> that one was fun. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, just little incidental characters like the Paris Sprites and Cherry's Jubilee and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there's a more recent character that's uh, been seeing a lot of notoriety. Yes, um, Kimmy Sparkle, I assume. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, that one, I just, I make that one by myself, and okay. Griffin does his own solo project called Silver Spoon Escapes from Camp Energy, and it's like a Let's Play that's in character with Silver Spoon. That's right, that's right. And we just kind of started doing those because Friendship is Witchcraft had been on break for a long time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just because, you know, Griffin moved to LA and he was busy with work and stuff like that. So we didn't want our channel to be like a ghost town. So we just sure, thought, sure. what can we make quickly? So right, okay. yeah, Kimmy Sparkle was my idea. And then he had his Let's Plays. Gotcha. I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. huh. And those have been really fun. You know, I get to do like a kind of loving spoof on people who review the episodes. Yes. Well, and I think it goes beyond just a spoof on people who review the episodes, which yeah, those can be incredibly interesting. But <laughs> there are people who believe that they are the only ones who do it. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> um, I have a lot of jokes in there about Kimmy Sparkle has kind of that complex where she accuses other girls of being like fake geek girls. And she hates, like, normal people because they're not special like her. Which I think, you know, a lot of people in around, like, the high school part of their life, people who are, like, outcasts can kind of have this issue with, like, hating everyone who's not them. Yeah, that's true. And they kind that's of true. have to believe they're, like, the most special because, I don't know, they don't feel special enough, I guess. Something like <laughs> that. <laughs> I believe we've had somebody just join. Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm here. Ah, I can't okay. guarantee that I'll... My computer keeps freezing, so... Okay. Yeah. All right, we'll, well, we'll just... We can just have you in as long as it works. Yep. All right. And yes, we just had somebody else join the call. Uh, Griffin <laughs> Lewis, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've heard from Jenny about how horrible you are and what a slave driver and how... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And how yep. you currently owe her in upwards of $48,000. Uh-huh. It, yeah, that, is, that actually. is actually correct. See, I'm telling you, I don't think it was a good idea promising her uh, money per word, because some of those characters really blab on. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 well, we've heard a, a general idea from her, but if anyone doesn't know you, could you describe real fast? What do you do? Uh... Well, as far as Friendship's Witchcraft is concerned, I am the co-creator, co-writer, and I also do the music and the editing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. I do a few voices, but not really. Well, you should uh, list them. Yeah, I do Celestia, 
and I do Sweetie Bot. Yep. And I do Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, and occasionally Carrot Pony when she's around. Oh, doing okay. things. <laughs> well, and we mentioned it briefly, but uh, the solo projects that have started uh, with Silver Spoon right. from Camp. Yes, from Camp Energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that's been a lot of fun doing that project. It's always something that I was like, sort of had on my mind ever since I uh, did a, a live stream of Limbo like mm-hmm. a year ago and uh, sort of did some improv while doing that. It ended up with this whole silver, this whole backstory with Silver Spoon. So I thought it was mm-hmm. good enough to make its own series. Yep. Um, it's a lot of fun to write, but unfortunately it's very difficult actually to edit I give okay. kudos to people who do these kind of let's plays because, well, not not really, because they <laughs> they just they just go through it once and they just kind of riff. Most people who do let let's plays just do one take, right? right? Yeah. I'm not doing one take. I'm doing literally hundreds of takes, right? And oh like, my. and then stringing them together, and then very oddly, once I have all the audio compiled together, then I play the game along to the audio. Oh, and okay. that sucks because let's you say you should do the game first. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Trust, oh, sure. I, oh, you think that I didn't try that? <laughs> you think that I thought this would be easier? Yeah, you just never tried the other way. <laughs> it's like you have. I have an idea for this joke, and then I realized, oh well, when I played the game, because it's the kind of game you got to play in one take, right? Pretty much. Um, yeah. There's no, there's no editing it later. So I'll have this idea. Basically, I'll play the game once. And then I will write the script. Mm -hmm. And then I will realize that the script has, you know, it's like, oh, I should stand in this spot for two seconds longer. And, oh, I I should move from here, point A to point B, faster. And then I have to replay the game to get the timing right, basically. Mm -hmm. I would be interested to have you do all that work and then just somebody switch the video on you. And just have it be a let's play of, like, Mario Kart and... Same voice and same <laughs> everything. Be just... That'd be f- I mean, I think that there's potential there because, like, the thing with the Let's Plays, ideally, it's not much work. You just record mm-hmm. your voice. Uh, it should be a situation where you can just pump them out. Unfortunately, I can't do that. I guess it's just not my, <laughs> it's just not my style. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to, you know, think about the jokes and write a longer script. Right. Um, but I would love to find a like find a space something like Mario Kart. Well, that's a bad example, but <laughs> something like that where you really can't you really can't just pump them out. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I can understand. Fun. Yeah. If we're gonna do Mario Kart, okay, no, I've got it. A dual let's play. Just two of you play a Mario Kart game, and mm-hmm. the rule will be whoever is in the lead has to be talking nonstop in one of their characters' voices. And that the only time boring. you can take a break is <laughs> if you purposely let the other person get ahead of you. Okay. Well, why did we do this? <laughs> that sounds awful. No. <laughs> I have no idea. Just throwing it out. Okay, all right. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing it out, too. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, well, on um, Friendship is Witchcraft, how did that get started? Do you remember the uh, genesis for it? Griffin, you take this one. <laughs> um, well, I mean, the Genesis isn't exactly a fascinating story. It's Doesn't kind of like no? we just we just came up with the idea. Uh-huh. So, I mean, that's so, so hard. <laughs> that's the answer to the question, ultimately. Yeah, the exact- well, there's, there's no fun story. There's a big no, difference sure. between coming up with an idea for something and actually going out and executing it. Well, well we guess... had, um, we've always, like, kind of written and made things. Like, when we were in high school, we made, like, a parody of Twilight and kind okay. of went ahead with that. So we were already kind of in a mode of, like, wanting to actually make something oh, okay. and make it happen. So, yeah, it had been, like, years in between and we hadn't had any ideas. So since we were both watching ponies, we were kind of like, let's do this. This will be fun. <laughs> and that's it. That's the boring story. <laughs> it's not boring, necessarily. <laughs> it's a little boring. Well, ultimately, the answer to the question, your question, there's a difference between having an idea and then executing an idea. Well, that the difference is drive, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Some people think of ideas and just don't act on them, and I, I have no idea why they do that. Yeah. But we do. Yeah. Well, drive and or ability. 
Right. Yeah, I, I could true. have all the drive in the world to make an animated feature and mm-hmm. it wouldn't happen. That's so. true. <laughs> I, I could have all the drive in the world to become the next uh, Olympic hurdler. And no. Not. You could actually do that if you tried, if you practiced. <laughs> Nope. I've, yep. Yep. I've passed the age of where they accept you. Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. One, uh, something I would like to mention on the Friendship Witchcraft, how far ahead do you plan them? Not oh. at all. Yeah, no, we just, we start the script, and then when the script is done, we make it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> One because at a time. <laughs> there is a lot of continuity is there? Yes, that's strange. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we have jokes that carry over. We have yeah. things that, that mean, happen in the show that complement I mean, it, which is... There's yeah. continuity in the sense that... Um, Callbacks. Yeah, the thing is that, like, the it's just continuity in the way that maybe, like, a, a show with multiple seasons will have continuity. Okay. Like, each season is written as its own thing, but they don't mm-hmm. think about season mm-hmm. two, season three, season four. And that's pretty much the same deal with us, but on an episode basis. I see. So even though it has this illusion of continuity, I mean, it does have continuity. Mm -hmm. It does. But it's not like, it's just, it's not like we we set up one thing in one episode and then three episodes later it comes back. You know what I mean? In a clever, we're always calling things back, but we're not like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I mean, specifically something that just uh, strikes accord with me is one of the first jokes was the eye candy right which it worked Mm because you know there were a pair of sprites right on spike's eyes and that was kind of funny but when that i'm assuming when you started work on that the luna eclipsed episode hadn't aired yet right right? yeah it turns out that there's a one-eyed character going around for candy oh yeah that (laughs) was amazing that was worked out in our favor and the thing about that is it's just it's just about being vigilant, yeah. right? It's like we saw that the fact that it had no eye and that he had the, was looking for candy, and it was like, oh man, we got to act on this. You know yes. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe we, we've just got a lot of luck because, like, we got there was actually a gypsy pie that appeared in the canonical. Yeah, and Twilight show. had a brother. Twilight had a brother. Twilight had wings. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she became a princess. Became That's the biggest princess. one. So like, we maybe we just got lucky. But I, yeah, I, I think maybe that's actually most of it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think vigilance has a key in it, but luck may. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think we should state flat out that you guys are not in cahoots with the writers. And no, no. <laughs> we shouldn't confirm or deny that. That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It cannot be confirmed. Is all I'll say. Mm-hmm. Aha. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now, I, I'm sorry, I can't recall off the top of my head, and apologize for that, but how many uh, Friendship Witchcraft episodes have been completed? It's nine, nine right? Nine? Yes. Okay, nine. nine. Okay, no, I I've also, seen them all, and I enjoyed them all. I just couldn't recall the exact number off the top of my head. I'm yeah, sorry. no, that's fine. <laughs> I kind and of forgot to do. With the uh, solo projects that we have, with Kimmy Sparkle and Silver Spoon Escapes Camp Energy, um, obviously those have been started because you two aren't in a place where you can uh, collab quite as efficiently, but has yeah. Friendship is Witchcraft stopped is the question. No. Okay. No. no. We're actually working on the next one right now. Oh, yay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we talk about that? I guess it's not. Well, yeah, let's talk about it. Don't, yeah. s- don't spoil anything that you think would be just a huge oh, joke no. once it's shown. Uh, yeah, I no way. I that, but... And I, but, I usually uh, say no spoilers, but given that you take <laughs> shows that have been aired, that's not really possible. So, okay, we're good. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we can just say um, it's Equestria Girls. Oh, it's Horse okay. Women. It's our spoof of Equestria Girls. Okay. And we want to break it into, like, four parts, ideally. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, we're working on part one now, and we might be showing it at BabsCon. So. Oh, okay. So we are going to BabsCon. On, yes. uh, yeah, April. apparently, uh, as of a few days ago, yeah. <laughs> Yay! Great! Yay! Are there plans to uh, wait and see what the new Equestria Girls will be before completing further scripts, or are you just going to... That would be a good idea, but (laughs) no. (laughs) (laughs) 
it, that's going to be like this summer, right? We don't want to wait that long. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, no, yeah. I, I don't mean entirely. I'm just obviously you said the next episode's being done. I was curious if you're going to wait before doing no. any future things before. <laughs> okay, all right. No, it'll probably be pretty fast. So. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean. That would be bad if we were delayed that long. <laughs> Trying to think of an example of eye candy in Equestria Girls, and I'm failing. <laughs> Might yeah, be in there that I haven't noticed, but... Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, everyone has eyes, so there's this hope. Is true. This is true. <laughs> I suppose we could make a joke at the end where Sunset Shimmer's eyes go all freaky as she becomes a demon, but... That's right. exactly what we'll do. Yay! You cracked it. I helped. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, that was just a joke by me, but I'm curious, have you had people, like, volunteer, I can help write for you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> we had someone for a while that was sending us entire scripts, which oh was interesting. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun time period. <laughs> <laughs> your your tone implies that this is something that you appreciate, but would rather people not do. Yes. No, they should do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, sorry. Definitely do it. Definitely send us your scripts. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. Are the said scripts going to be used? Um, okay. Uh, we don't know. There's hope. <laughs> well, just send them in, and then we'll see. <laughs> yeah. That's a good take on it. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which um, which of the series do you feel was the uh, most difficult to produce? Oh gosh, um, probably number um, number eight, the wedding, oh. which I also think is the best one. <laughs> Took so many so many months to make. I mean, months. We're talking about months to make this parody. Yeah. Right. So, so that was definitely the most challenging to make. Well, I know that there was a lot of collaborations on that because I know you've had um, right. Uh, the song was actually made i mean it's not just a right, look right. the whole song and, <laughs> and the boy mm-hmm. band was created yes exactly. <laughs> yeah i love that that's a lot of fun and i know you had i know you had uh, an artist that has sadly deleted their account since but scarlet peace was one of the voices for one of the bridesmaids oh yeah yeah she was did she, yeah did she delete her account so she, that's did. That happened? she did she has moved on um oh. uh, yeah, it, it was it was without animosity, but she decided it was t- time to move on, and she felt that her involvement in the community could hinder her future chances as a recording artist. So, uh, I mean, I get okay. that. I get it too, and I'm I'm sad to see that they've passed, but at the same time, you know, I I I was able to save some of the stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there uh, any future uh, guest spots that can be mentioned? Um, hmm. I don't think so. Okay. Sorry. I mean, we do. There are two that we're planning, but yeah, I don't know if we should talk about them. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Don't don't ruin anything if it's going to be a surprise. That's that's fine. Yeah. Right. I'm just like curious. mainly just because we haven't asked the people recently. Like we asked them months ago and have to make sure they're still on board. Right. That makes. So sense. we don't want to say and then I actually, like, oh, I, I, actually talk, I talked to both of them and oh. they're they're down. So. Yay! <laughs> but so, we probably okay. still shouldn't. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they now we're doing Equestria Girls, so I guess whatever. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah, Let's, yeah. Move Let's move we'll on. Move on. <laughs> we'll move on. I was just curious if you were going to do any cameos in the style of uh, George Clooney in the early days of South Park, where no. he voiced uh, he voiced the dog. No. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Never said a word. Just did growls and grumbles as they went. <laughs> That's funny. But, <laughs> that would be fun. I don't know who we'd do that for though, even. I would say ask show staff. Just ask them if you can have them do some grumbles and growls oh, well, uncredited. Um, we can't say who, but we have had someone from oh, the show have, do a voice. We have had someone from the show do a voice on Friendships with Crabs. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. It's happened. Right. But we cannot say. We, we gave <laughs> okay. them like a pseudonym that they invented for themselves with some like clever process. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it would not be <laughs> unprecedented. Awesome. Excellent. I right. can hope for it. Right. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Have you had any um, any of the uh, show staff, either creators or VAs, have they mentioned the uh, friendship with witchcraft to you? Um, 
to us? No. But okay. have they mentioned it at all? Yes. A few okay. of mm -hmm. them know of it. A few of them are aware of it. Okay, okay. I'm just... Yeah, we know Claire has seen it. I don't think she liked it, though. But um, we also know Andrew think... Francis saw it. We watched it. I, I don't think a lot of the show guys like, like, like it, and that's very understandable. Because, yeah. frankly... I don't know why many people like it. <laughs> it's uh, it's just a very surrealist thing, and uh, you know that's not the kind of comedy that's that most people enjoy. So. Well, I do know that uh, some of my friends that love the series, they mm -hmm. they did get a bit upset at the end of the royal wedding one, where we pan down and see. Oh man. <laughs> I don't said a lot of people, which surprised me a little, because, I mean... Oh, you didn't like it? Real. <laughs> yeah, she's dead. She's like a skeleton down there. <laughs> I, I understand the joke and the humor on it, and I thought it was funny, but I can understand why some people are a little bit, huh, huh, huh. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, I've seen that reaction a lot. I don't know. I feel like we've done worse things, so that kind of surprised me, but, oh, well. Yeah, we've definitely done some pretty bad things. Yeah. <laughs> Well, on the other end of it, I have to admit, I was recently watching Luna Eclipsed, and Pip's voice shocked me. Oh, yeah? Because I was so used to... To the, <laughs> to the high. I was so used to your version of it that right. the actual voice surprised me. Like, what? That's not what he sounds like? Oh, wait, yes it is. Never mind. Yeah, it's okay. funny that you mention that, because I don't even remember what our Pip sounds like, per se. I did the it voice. It was you! Like, yeah, I know. I did the voice, but I can't even remember. It was just like... It was like, I'm oh, Luna, you're the princess. Yeah, it was like, you know. It's just like falsetto, basically. Yeah. Falsetto Cockney, I think. Yeah. Or attempted Cockney. <laughs> Sorry, that was an unintentional dig. I apologize. Yeah, you just, that was it. cruel. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Griffin can't do British accents. I can't. I can't. <laughs> well, fair enough. There's not a lot of British accents in the show, just Pip. Thankfully. <laughs> I can't do it either. I don't know. We I heard that attempted at a cockney that you just did right there. That was funny. Was that great? Yeah, I've been practicing. I don't know if it was accurate, but it was fun. <laughs> yep, that was my attempt at Griffin's attempt at Cockney. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the um, on the Friendship is Witchcraft, you done a ton of voices for it. I mean, both of you, but Jenny mm -hmm. for a large part. How long did that take? I mean, because it seems like the voices are very well fleshed out. Um. Thank you, I guess. But um, yeah. <laughs> th this was my first like time doing VA and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think just as far as like how long it takes, people can like see that because it gets better like every episode. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it's just like whichever one you start thinking they sound good, that's how long it took, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, um, yeah, at the beginning, I think they all sounded more similar to each other. Yeah. And... Um, you know, just less defined and less developed. And then as it goes on, I think around, like, episode five, they started being good. So, okay. yeah, I guess just this is my source of practice and experience in doing the voices. And then I get a little better every time, hopefully. Huh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, because it is very high quality. Uh, the songs, too. Oh, yeah. Now, I am curious about the songs. You, you both write the songs, is that correct? Um, Griffin uh, writes the music, and I help with the lyrics. Okay, okay. Which has been one of the uh, more popular ones? I have an I have my own answer, but I'm curious as to your guys' response. Hmm? Pinky's Brew. Pinky. Yeah. Which has been our most popular song? Um, uh, what's the question? I'm sorry. Which yeah, song which do you think been... is had, yeah, most popular? Well, it's probably Pinky's Brew, although yeah. it might very well be the Gypsy Bard at this point. I don't actually know. Interesting. Okay. All right. Yeah. What was your answer going to be? Princess of the Night. Really? Uh, I don't think that one is, is no. that popular. <laughs> but um... be... I'm surprised. No, I I love that one, and uh, just because I was watching, as I mentioned, watching the clips, and when it gets to that scene, I almost expected to hear the ba wa ba wa ba wa intro. <laughs> right. Right. And, yeah. And honestly, in um. Season three with uh, uh, Sleepless in Ponyville, Princess Luna oh, says, yeah. "I am the princess of the night. It is my yeah, which is pretty funny." 
I, I can't help but wonder if it was a throwback to you guys. <laughs> no, or just it wasn't, but that would be cool. Yeah, I, I think great. it's always a coincidence, although it would be cool if we were getting like actual shout-outs, but I don't <laughs> think we've ever really gotten one. Well, I, I doubt they'd be able to specifically say it, but it could be a subtle hint type thing. Nah. <laughs> my headcanon says that was a shout okay, out Okay, all right. That's my we'll go cannon. with that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Have there been any ideas that you've just fully on, full on scrapped halfway through? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> a lot of them. Oh, I mean, uh, pretty much every script we have, we have like alternate lines for every line, and then we just pick our favorite, usually after they're recorded. Yeah. And you can go to our some videos we uploaded, like alternate unused takes, basically, for all the episodes. You can just hear a bunch of the unused lines that we recorded but never actually put in the episode. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. I think you can find those on our old account. Right, right. Oh. Yeah, there have been some... Uh, troubles in keeping the video accounts open haven't there yeah which is frustrating but um we're hoping with the new copyright like the nature of it that we'll be able to actually post it on youtube and just um you know hasbro will monetize it and keep the money from it and like we don't care if they do that so (laughs) as long as we can post it i mean we'll see what happens no i know that we efn gets the occasional flag and nothing has been wrong and what's the problem (laughs) yeah we get that too like videos um what was it what song did you try to post where it got oh i forget but yeah something like that happened i think it was your recent oc project song oh yes yes that's right one the applejack one got flagged and the oc project one got flagged yeah just we, original music oh, because I think since we've since we've had strikes I think they just mm-hmm. preemptively flag all our videos now and then check yeah. them after. Luckily, yeah. we don't have strikes anymore. The strikes expire. Yeah. That's but cool. unfortunately, I think YouTube has now officially um, like they're stopped tolerating videos even more. I actually thought that they were going to loosen up a little, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. actually my impression is that they no longer let you automatically monetize a video anymore. Yeah. It used to be very convenient for us. You could just hit monetize, not have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. But I think they updated their terms. So it's like now if you want to monetize a video, it's definitely going to take like 24 hours to process, okay. which means mm-hmm. someone is going to watch it, which means they're going to not approve of it basically. Right. Okay. Yeah. And we don't even try it on like episodes where we use show content, just pretty much the song videos. Mm -hmm. I think that's literally it. But even those, they don't get approved usually. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you know, I'm glad that there is a site where we can watch so much general (laughs) content from the world, but at the same time, come on, please. I want to watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's I frustrating. Know. I get why they do it, but it's frustrating to deal with. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, on the subject of frustrating, I am curious, have you had any uh, less pleasant fan reactions or interactions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> like, what What sort? Well, no, you I'm just curious just they don't like how it or... invasive they've gotten. Oh, I mean... When people are being nice, then usually it's not a problem. I think we just have a lot of people, like, Friendship is Witchcraft is really polarizing. Mm-hmm. And when people hate it, a lot of people, like, really hate it. Okay, okay. Like, they're angry. So, huh. that mm-hmm. happens. And even at cons, people will, like, tell you in person that they, like, hate it. Which is weird, because I never know how to respond to that. But <laughs> I would just you just say, go, like, thank okay. you so much. Do you want an autograph? <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, my God. Okay, I've told this story before. But it's, like, my favorite. Okay. Um I was at BronyCon and someone like asked me to sign his con book, I guess because I was like standing around other people and signing stuff. Uh So he had assumed that I was someone else. And like while I was signing it, he said like, thanks, Rena Chan. And I said, oh, no, I'm not Rena Chan. I do Friendship (laughs) is Witchcraft. And he was like, oh, I hate that series. I was like, "Uh uh-oh, well, here's your con book. Like, I just finished signing it, so here. See, I take your con book and go, oh, I'm sorry, well, let me sign it extra big for you then. There you go. Yeah, it was just super awkward. I was like, okay, bye. (laughs) Thanks for the opinion, man. Um, Yeah, it was weird. 
It's like, why didn't he ask first? But, oh well. Well, it, it's the mentality that Russia used to have. Let's stand in this line and see what's at the front of it when we get there. <laughs> That's my best guess. I don't know. Well, we mentioned uh, BabsCon, but are there any uh, other cons that you're attending this year that you know of? Uh, not that we know of. I mean, oh. we'll we'll go to Everfree. We'll go to BronyCon. It's just that yeah. we don't have money. <laughs> we're not we're not rich individuals. I follow that. So unfortunately, well, Griffin, there there is one that's confirmed us. Oh. Um, we do have a July con. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, but I don't, I don't know. know if we're supposed to say the name, but maybe oh, we well, are. <laughs> people can probably know. find out. It, it's something that's happening in July. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think it's July. I'm gonna just type it in the chat because Griffin forgot apparently. But um. <laughs> oh, I remember now. I remember now. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Something in July has been confirmed, but we don't know if it's publicly yeah. confirmed. So j- you guys can figure it yeah, out. I'm it sure you're wonderful. I don't sleuths. think it's secret, but yeah, I think they said they wanted to like put it on their site or something. Okay. So I just haven't been telling anyone. If somebody wishes to be a super sleuth, I'm sure they can figure it out. We won't give you any more hints. <laughs> yep, I've given him figured it out, even though it was a really obvious. Okay, so we have something in July, but we won't say what. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now, I am uh, curious on Kimmy Sparkle. How mm-hmm. how much of that is written before you start recording? Actually, all of it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just, all right. um, yeah, I know a lot of people ask that, and they think I improv it. It seems to me, but, when I listen to it, um, it feels like it's something that more could improv'd be. It. <laughs> well, it feels like it's something that could be improv, but it's not necessarily, so I thought I would ask. Yeah, it would sound like that because I have her like pause a lot and like just speak with kind of a strange cadence. So that's good if it sounds that way. But yeah, I just write the whole thing in like Google Docs or whatever before I do it. (laughs) And I should mention that you have gotten the attention of one of the writers. (laughs) Yeah, Josh Haber. I was really excited about that. I think it's really funny. I'm glad he knew it was a joke because it just kind of worked out that the person I was picking on is like a new writer to the show. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and I really liked both his episodes, so I'm happy that he thinks Kimmy is funny. Yes, that is good. It's always nice when they can interact with the show staff, interact with us positively. So okay. how many how many Kimmy Sparkle faces do we have for use? Okay, I just counted and I have 40. <laughs> 40 of them, oh my goodness. Yes, <laughs> um, which I didn't expect. But yeah, <laughs> she's got a lot of little faces. I don't use them all every video, and I should. But, yeah, she's got a lot of expressions. I can foresee an upcoming review where she just, like, starts having spasms and goes yeah, back just and an emotional all roller 40, coaster. All 40 within 30 seconds. <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes I just open, like, because it's Pony Creator, so I just, like, sure. go crazy with it. Like, what weird eye and mouth expression combo can I figure out? <laughs> So I think some of them I've never used because they just look weird, but mm-hmm. they're fun to have on hand. <laughs> and I, I'm curious, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but at the end of uh, the recent Kimmy Sparkle ones, you show uh, different pictures. Are those actual uh, fan art that's been sent in? Yeah, it's really cute. I've, oh. I've been really happy with all the fan art that shows up, like on DeviantArt and Tumblr mostly. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think also a lot of people make it just because they're my friend, so it's not necessarily fan art, right, but right. it's like friend art because I'm friends with a lot of pony artists on Tumblr. Okay, okay. And I've <laughs> met them at various cons and stuff. Right, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> is, there a, is there an expected uh, plot, uh, underlying plot for all of Kimmy Sparkle, or is it just one at a time? Um, I have got it planned out a little bit. Like, oh. you'll notice she has, you know, an alicorn horn that appears sometimes. She's basically yep. just following the trajectory of every bad fan OC. That, mm-hmm. So it's it's not unpredictable. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I've got it planned out a little. I, I did notice in one of them that the horn slowly faded away and disappeared by the end of Yeah, the I kind of you. play around with it. Like, it's been showing up more and more, and sometimes it's just there, and sometimes it's, you know, a little clear. But, um, yeah. I play around with it a lot, and that will definitely come to light later. Mm, okay, all right. So <laughs> we will see the true sparkle. Yes. Ah, I'm calling it right now. She's Twilight's mom. 
Okay, you're wrong. <laughs> Thank goodness, because if I had been right. correct, then I would have been upset that I had ruined something, and I just tried to guess nope. the most outlandish thing ever. And whew, Well, careful, okay. that can be right sometimes, but no, you're wrong. Yeah, that's why I was freaking out as soon as I said it, and there was a pause. Like, oh, no, did I? T- oh, nope. Do I have to cut this part? Okay, all right. All right, good. No, I wouldn't make you cut it anyway. Nothing is sacred. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're having a few problems with the call, and Griffins has dropped out for right now, which is a shame. Yeah, mm. he'll be back. Yeah, <laughs> always. Yeah. Can uh, uh, my guess would be that in the uh, Friendship is Witchcraft series, I know there's been a lot of resonating with people on Sweetie Bot. Mm-hmm. But uh, are there any other characters that you've just heard a lot of positive uh, things about? People really seem to connect with your version of it. Um, Sweetie Bot's the biggest, but Gypsy Pie is also pretty huge. Okay, all right. Um, and I don't know. It's like when things are new, people like them. Like people liked Twinkle, and they liked Rain Cloud. Ah, yeah. But you know, those haven't been in episodes for a while, so. Well, Rain Cloud exploded. I don't expect to see Rain Cloud. Yeah. I'm soon. <laughs> yeah, not really. It's not looking good for Rain Cloud, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. And I assume the Eldritch tentacles are still working their way around Ponyville. They are, yeah. And that one should be fun. We've, you know, we've had episodes where we thought we can work that back in, but <laughs> not in our next one. Well, I, I am curious, like uh, with the tentacles, um, while you mm-hmm. guys do, while the first few episodes were just essential redubs, mm-hmm. uh, more and more you're adding stuff in and you're altering the video. And I mean, the yeah. tentacles were not in Ponyville, but. Oh, really? No. <laughs> well, except with the maniac. I mean, if you had somehow gone to the future, taken the maniac's hair and brought it back, that would have worked. But... Yeah. That would be good. But yeah, um, I guess it's just, you know, we get more ambitious as it goes on. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Griffin does like the video editing, so right. he loves to do that. You know, he likes to push himself, I guess, and mm-hmm. just make things as crazy as they can be. And we've made friends with animators that can help us out with things. Okay. All so, right. I, yeah, I think also as it gets bigger, we have more resources available of people who are willing to help out with vectors or right. animations. So, and we also like to rearrange the scenes themselves more recently, mm-hmm. like put them in different orders. So that's fun to play around with. Hmm. Okay. Well, Griffin, I'm curious uh, your opinion on the question. Which character do you feel in Friendship is Witchcraft has really resonated with people? Well, I mean, if any character has resonated at all, mm-hmm. it's Sweetie Belle. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure no one else has done. Well, maybe Pinkie Pie. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean. Uh, if when you say resonant, you mean people actually look at the character and say, oh, this is a person that I can connect with in some way. Yeah. Yes. Or just, I would really want to see more of this. Well, yeah. Pretty much, pretty much the characters don't, don't function the way normal people function. They're not really people at all, right? Mm-hmm. True. Like, they're just not... <laughs> I, I had this thought yesterday, I was just thinking about it, and you know... There are different levels to which you can say characterization is good or bad, right? Mm, sure. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you could create a criticism of French or Witchcraft, and you could say that the characters are bad. You could say the characters are bad because they're essentially flat, they're one-dimensional, they have their goals, they don't have any goals, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But yeah. I was thinking about that question, and I don't know if I, I just don't like that paradigm exactly. You know, because okay. I mean? that is a criticism we get a lot is that the characters are no good. Hmm. Um, and I was thinking about, like, for example, say something like an Airplane, the movie Airplane, yeah. hilarious movie. Mm. Are are there even characters at all in that movie? Just want really, to tell right? you both. There are good no, luck, char- there are no characters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. They're just gag. Everyone's just a gag, right? right? Everyone's just sort of a normal person, but in this outlandish bizarre like world that they live in and even something like my little pony Mm -hmm. take for example my little pony let's say you have a script and it's something at the end of an episode they always do this let's say twilight sparkle learned her lesson about always wanting to be number one or whatever something like that not that's not Twilight's (laughs) character but she learned some lesson about how she shouldn't overwork herself Okay. And then you have the you know, then you got all the characters going one by one. You got Fluttershy's got a line like, "We we like you no matter what, Twilight." And then uh, the Applejack comes in and she's like, 
You don't got to overwork yourself. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> blah. Okay. Okay. But my point is, so you've basically got all the ponies one by one have a line that are based, you know, they do this a lot in the show. They each have a line that basically says the exact same thing. It's like, we're all your friends. We're all here for you. Right? Okay. But now imagine if you just were the script writer and you just switched their lines with each other. Right? Okay. Um, you could do that, right? And Fluttershy, instead of saying, oh, Twilight, we like you, Rainbow Dash could say that. And Applejack, instead of saying her line, Rarity could say that. You know what I'm saying? I think so. Sure. I, I, hope I'm being, I hope I'm being clear with yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So then is, is it fair to say that the My Little Pony characters are, have no character and that they're all one-dimensional and they're all you can swap their lines with each other and that that means they're poorly written? I'm not sure. I don't think it does, right? Hmm. I guess my point is that sometimes people accuse us of having superficial superficiality to our characters. Like, like what they just is drive the jokes. Like, yeah. what is rarity? What is rarity's shtick? Her shtick is that she's a war veteran. But right. what else? What else is there to her character? Well, nothing, right? Hmm. Giant hats. And people say, oh, yeah, the giant hats. But it's all superficial. But people basically right. say there's nothing real about her character. But I think you could make that accusation about pretty much any show ever. You know what I mean? Not not everyone. Sure, some, sure. S- some, some shows, I mean, a serious drama, obviously you've got a super developed, complex character. Hopefully. But what about, like, uh, Samurai Jack or the Powerpuff Girls? Like, yeah. uh, the Powerpuff Girls, are they well characterized? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. do we do we get a sense for each of them? We, we know that Buttercup's the tomboy and Bubbles is the silly one, but, like, isn't that just as superficial? I don't know. I, I guess I, my, 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 my main point here my main point here is just that I always felt like if there was ever a criticism of French was witchcraft that I thought was bizarre, it was the characters being basically non characters. Because gotcha. one one, that happens a lot in yeah. media. And two, that's the whole point. The whole point of our show is that they're not characters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't they're not characters in the tip of they're not characters in the traditional sense of yeah. seeming like they would be real. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, they're like that... parodies of the cast of children's show characters. <laughs> yeah. I know that in one of the uh, more recent episodes, uh, uh, Philly Vanilli, I know that some of the show staff got a lot of flack, especially Amy Keating Rogers. People were angry that Pinkie Pie would yell at Fluttershy to the amount that made her cry. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Right. They were they were livid about this. And yeah. A lot of, and you know what if somebody's going to be angry about something okay, I I would say relax but whatever. But I really felt that the major criticism that's out of character. I mm-hmm. I felt that was incredibly unfair. I I don't know a single person that has never acted in a way differently from what they usually act. Every single person I know um, has an outburst or will just react right, oddly right. at some point. Yeah, exactly. And, totally. and as somebody pointed out to me, everything that Pinkie Pie said to Fluttershy, if their roles had been reversed, that speech would have worked on Pinkie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's... Not so yeah. much that she was being cruel. It's she didn't have empathy at that point and wasn't able to put herself in the other position. But I don't think a lot of people saw that. They just saw, oh, she made her cry, and that's out of character. That's not what she would do. I disagree. Yeah, I don't know. I think in a case like that, like what a lot of people don't think about is just like it's not a drama, and the reason that Pinkie Pie was doing that in the script is because the writers thought that would be a funny gag. <laughs> but then also people very- being like. Pinkie Pie's cruel. It's like, well, it's a joke. I didn't think it was that funny. But <laughs> it's weird to be like, do they not understand her character? It's like sometimes I think the writers just aren't that invested in the characters and people don't acknowledge that they don't take the show as seriously as the viewers take it. Well, I have seen some people that take it far too seriously, absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I guess I don't have much to add to that. Uh I didn't like it. I didn't like how Pinky was so cruel. Okay. And I didn't like it for yeah, maybe a different reason. It's not that she was. I just thought it wasn't funny. <laughs> it's just that she was, she was just so cruel. You know what I mean? It was making me uncomfortable how how cruel she was being. Sure. And I understand the joke. And I and I actually thought the joke could work almost 
in another context. Like if this was a show for adults, I think it would be funny almost. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's just it's made me feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> so that was about that. I can understand. Well, a question that I ask in all of my interviews, um, mm-hmm. and we'll do it individually so you guys can, you know, rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first, okay. I suppose. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> sure, sure, hit us. In all of My Little Pony, what would you say is the one line or one scene that defines you as a brony? Uh huh. Griffin should go first. <laughs> Jesus. Because I don't I, have an answer I prepared. <laughs> I don't have an answer for this. Uh, I, good lord. The record That's is two minutes. Question. The record so far is two minutes of silence thinking about it. I have an answer already. <laughs> Oh, let's right. go with Jenny. Okay. One okay. second. Yeah. Well, it's more like just my favorite scene, and good it's enough, in an episode enough. that no one even likes. Okay. But um, in Over a Barrel, there's hmm. that scene where they're all on the train, and um, like they're they're being shushed by Spike because they're like giggling and he's trying to sleep, and um, you know, like the the ponies like are just laughing harder because Spike's irritated with them, and I just felt like that really encapsulated kind of like female friendships and like being at a sleepover it's kind of like a scene that's really relatable i don't know about for guys but for girls it's kind of like every time you're at a sleepover there's someone that's like shut up you guys i want to go to sleep and everyone else like just can't stop laughing so (laughs) i don't know i just thought that was like a really cute scene and it really kind of captured like friendship which is what they're going for so i can see that that was also uh fluttershy's biggest burn ever when spike oh yeah huffy the magic dragon yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then they laugh harder even though it's like a stupid joke so yeah, yeah i don't know I, I just thought that was a really good scene okay <laughs> um i actually thought that scene was really stupid and lame. wow okay all right What's uh, <laughs> scene? um well i you know i i don't know this is a hard question for me because there's nothing well your answer is even worse than mine then i agree <laughs> that my bad i just yeah. don't I don't know how to answer this question. I, I want to answer it. Well, what's, how about this? What's, what's my favorite scene from the show? What's my favorite sequence? Okay. Probably something um, with snips and snails. Um, I, I've always loved that, that feeling in season one was the best feeling where every time you watched an episode and you were just sort of on the edge of your seat waiting for those surprisingly good moments, right? I mean, we take it for granted now because we all like the show, but the whole point when I was watching it anyway was that this was a dumb girls cartoon and I was a grown man watching it and it was not normal. But then every so often they did that one thing that made me laugh out loud. And then I was like, Oh, this is why I'm watching it. It's for, it's like, you know, it's it's like this idea that the writers are adults and they're sort of sneaking in jokes for adults. Sure. Even though that's not what it is. That's what it felt like. Right. Like, right. I don't know. I, I just remember it was, I think it was over bear. Or sorry, not over barrel. Um, this is the fourth episode, Apple Bucking Season. Right. That was the f- episode that basically switched me from I'm watching this show because it's kind of bad and I think it's still funny mm-hmm. to, oh, this show is actually funny and the writers are actually clever. Okay. I especially like the joke where Applejack's like leaning in and out of the trophy, going like, <laughs> ooh, 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 looking at her own reflection. <laughs> and then Pinkie Pie just joins her for no reason. And I was <laughs> like, oh, that's really funny. And I was like, I can't believe this show did a joke that was that funny. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, that yeah. episode and had like one of the best jokes ever where Applejack is already tired and they give her a giant trophy and she has to painstakingly drag it. And you just hear like the scraping sound of the trophy being dragged. <laughs> it's like, yes. They just made her day worse by giving her this award. And nobody offers to yeah, help that, her that, move that, the trophy or try to pick it up for yeah. her or just, yeah, she's fine. <laughs> she's okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that episode had some seriously great gags. And, and everything, basically everything after that was funny. I just, I yep. love the little jokes, you know? For me, um, as a retroactive joke in it, the fact that Big Macintosh spoke so much in that episode is funny to me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, everybody, today we have been speaking with uh, Jenny Nicholson and Griffin Lewis of The Friendship is Witchcraft and Kimmy Sparkle and Silver Spoon Escapes Camp Energy. And it's been a frustrating Skype experience, and I'm sorry for that, guys. <laughs> But thank, thank you very you much for, for coming by. It's all good. 
Yeah, everybody, you hear this quality right now? This is higher quality than we've had for most of the call. <sighs> oh, it's so sad. I know. You guys will have to come back at some point then, I guess. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, uh, definitely. check out their YouTube channels and Tumblr. Uh, uh, um, at Puns, and I'm on Tumblr at Spider Jewel, and Griffin is Griffinella. Okay. Well, thank. I'm sorry Skype behaved so poorly, but thank you so much for Sugar Cloud Poems thank you. coming by. <sighs> Hopefully this can be redone and re-edited <laughs> in some future edition, but thank you guys very much for your time. Thank you. Everyone, this has been Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight. I hate Skype. I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Bye. Spherical world has different time zones, and I'm in one of them. Okay, and I must be in a different one. I think that's, that's how crazy. It works. Yes, I'm glad we talked about this for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody is totally in the dark, could you uh, describe a little bit? Uh, what do you do? Okay, um, I make along with Griffin Lewis. The other guy. Um, we both write Friendship is Witchcraft. And that's the fan parody series where we dub over episodes of My Little Pony with our own comedic script. And I do a lot of the voices on that, too. Yep. Well, I think a lot is a bit of an understatement. You do <laughs> almost all. Yeah, I mean, there are ones I don't. But yeah, oh, the yeah. main six, um, Spike, Apple Bloom, Luna... Um, Snowdrop recently. <laughs> that one was fun. Yes. <laughs> and, yeah, just little incidental characters like the Paris Sprites and Cherry's Jubilee and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and there's a more recent character that's uh, been seeing a lot of notoriety. Yes. Um, Kimmy Sparkle, I assume. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, that one... I just I make that one by myself, and okay. Griffin does his own solo project called Silver Spoon Escapes from Camp Energy, and it's like a Let's Play that's in character with Silver Spoon. That's right, that's right. And we just kind of started doing those because Friendship is Witchcraft had been on break for a long time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just because, you know, Griffin moved to L.A., and he was busy with work and stuff like that, so we didn't want our channel to be like a ghost town, so we just sure, thought, sure. what can we make quickly, so... Right, okay. Yeah, Kimmy Sparkle was my idea, and then he had his Let's Plays. Gotcha, I understand, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and those have been really fun. You know, I get to do, like, a kind of loving spoof on people who review the episodes. Yes, well, and I think it goes beyond just a spoof on people who review the episodes, which, eh, those can be incredibly interesting, but <laughs> there are people who believe that they are the only ones who do it. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I have a lot of jokes in there about Kimmy Sparkle has kind of that complex. focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello, everyone. This is Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. Today with me, I have someone that you probably recognize the voice to, or the other voice to, or the other voice to, or the other <laughs> voice to. Ms. Jenny Nicholson, hello. Hello. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> How are you today? I'm fine. How are you? A uh, little early still, I admit this, a little early. Okay, I guess this feels dishonest because we've already been speaking before you recorded, but... 
Yeah. Good. Shh, no, this is off the cuff. <laughs> okay. We plan this. No, no. Hey, hey, tell me more. Is it early there? That's so. It is early. Lab on. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've heard a, a general idea from her, but if anyone doesn't know you, could you describe real fast? What do you do? Uh, well, as far as Friends of Witchcraft is concerned, I am the co-creator, co-writer, and I also do the music and the editing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. I do a few voices, but not really. Well, you should um, list them. Yeah, <laughs> I do Celestia, and I do Sweetie Bot. And I do Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, and occasionally Carrot Pony when she's around. Oh, doing okay. things. <laughs> well, and we mentioned it briefly, but uh, the solo projects that have started uh, with Silver Spoon right. from Camp. Yes, from Camp Energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that's been a lot of fun doing that project. It's always something that I was like, sort of had on my mind ever since I. Uh, did a, a live stream of Limbo like mm-hmm. a year ago and uh, sort of did some improv while doing that and it ended up with this whole silver, this whole backstory with Silver Sex where she accuses of other girls of being like fake geek girls and she mm-hmm. hates like normal people because they're not special like her which I think you know a lot of people in around like the high school part of their life people who are like outcasts can kind of have this issue with like hating everyone who's not them yeah that's true. And they kind of have to believe they're like the most special because I don't know they don't feel special enough I guess something like that. <laughs> I believe we've had somebody just join. Uh, cool. Yes, I'm here. Ah, I can't okay. guarantee that I'll. My computer keeps freezing, so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, best... we'll just we can just have you in as long as it works. Yeah. All right. And yes, we just had somebody else join the call. Uh, Griffin mm-hmm. Lewis, hello. Hello. <laughs> well, we've heard from Jenny about how horrible you are and what a slave driver and how Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how yep. you currently owe her in upwards of forty eight thousand uh-huh. dollars. Right? Yeah, that, is, that actually. is actually correct. See, I'm telling you, I don't think it was a good idea promising her money per word because some of those characters really blame.